Okay, good morning, everybody. My name is Deepak, uh, and I work as a software engineer at eBay in experimentation uh, reporting platform. You can connect me via LinkedIn, and this entire tech uh, presentation is available in the form of a tech blog. So I'll, I'll be talking about how we are using uh, Grafana to monitor anomalies uh, within experimentation platform. So what is experimentation platform, also called as uh, A-B testing platform? So A-B testing platform uh, uh, allows us to present uh, users of the site with different experiences, and then it allows us to measure the performance of uh, each experience so that we can make informed decisions about uh, whether we, we should we release those features to the customers or not. So these variations could be very tiny, a uh, few color changes uh, on the site, or it could be very complex, like uh, you could have changed the algorithm in the back end, uh, or for the matter, it could be anything. So in the end, we end up uh, measuring uh, a set of uh, both bankable and uh, non-bankable metrics. Uh, mostly we are interested in uh, bankable metrics like uh, GMV, and all of that, uh, but we also take into account uh, non-bankable metrics as well. So once we have all this data, we can make some informed decision, uh, should we go ahead and uh, release the features or not. So at, at any time, we have around uh, 1,500 to 2,000 uh, live experiments, and this entire report generation process was uh, recently migrated uh, from uh, data warehouse systems like uh, Teradata uh, to Hadoop. And every day, uh, we generate around uh, 200 plus uh, metrics for each experiment we have. And we process around uh, hundreds of terabytes of data on a Hadoop cluster, uh, which is a 3,000 node cluster. And we submit around uh, 300 to 400 uh, MapReduce jobs. So it's, it's, this is a pretty big process, and it takes around uh, 18 to 24 hours to complete. So the entire system is uh, built using a mix of both uh, open source and uh, non-open source technologies. Uh, we use uh, Scala um, uh, mostly to uh, write our MapReduce jobs. Uh, we were thinking of Java earlier, but then we switched to Scala using, uh, we have a Scooby library in Scala, so we use uh, Scala and Scooby. And we, we also have a mix of uh, other systems, like we have some certain Hive queries, and we still have some legacy code uh, left behind uh, in Teradata. And we use a, a proprietary tool called MicroStrategy to visualize uh, all the metrics that we are generating for each experiment. So this is a high-level flow of uh, the user, uh, uh, user's journey through the site. So the user could use any kind of medium, tablet, desktop, or, or, or a cell phone. And we have a bunch of, we have, we have like a pool of uh, private cloud servers, which are going to handle the request of, uh, e which is going to handle each request uh, of the user. So we, all these application servers are organized in the form of pools, and each pool is going to uh, take into account uh, the response uh, based on the type of the activity the user is doing. For example, user is uh, performing a search, then we have a search pool, and that's going to uh, handle that request. So each of the servers uh, in those uh, pools will be logging users' activity, um, uh, which could be like uh, uh, anything, like uh, his user ID and uh, uh, what pages he's visiting, what experiments he needs to be shown. All of this is logged onto the application server itself. And this data is then moved on to uh, Hadoop, which is then processed by uh, different uh, teams within the company, including the experimentation uh, reporting platform. Each of these application servers that you see here uh, need to contact, uh, there's something called experimentation qualification engine. So based on uh, user's uh, uh, activity and based on uh, the user and the experiment that is configured on that particular page what user is visiting, this experimentation qualification engine is going to uh, return a list of experiments that needs to be shown to the user. And once the user is shown that uh, experiment or if he has experienced or if he has not experienced, we collect all, the, all of that data and then we try to relate uh, the metrics uh, to that particular ex uh, experiment, uh, what is being shown on the page. Each page obviously could be having multiple experiments uh, that's, that's, that's shown at any time. So coming to these anomalies within experiments, so all the experiments that, uh, that we see uh, could be facing uh, anomalies, and this could be actually corrupting uh, the, the metrics what we are computing. So there are various reasons uh, why we could see uh, anomalies within experiments. Uh, first is the traffic corruption. Ideally, we want. Uh, a random amount of traffic to be allocated uh, to, each, uh, to, to each, each user for a given experiment. But at times, like, the traffic could be skewed, and we could see some kind of traffic corruption. That would eventually lead uh, to anomaly within that experiment that is uh, having the anomaly, uh, which is having the skewness. So other thing is most common, other reason is the tag corruption. So all the application servers that you saw there uh, earlier, so they actually need to log the data onto the server itself. So they might, all those applications might be logging the data incorrectly. Or there could also be a data loss when all of the data is transferred eventually to the Hadoop cluster. So one other common reason for, uh, uh, for, for this anomaly is the cache refresh. 
So each of the application servers, uh, they need to, uh, they actually maintain a cache so that they can avoid hitting the qualification engine over and over again. And due to some kind of a software or hardware glitch, there might be a, a corruption in the cache and that will eventually, uh, is going to corrupt uh, one or multiple experiments. So these are the uh, various high level reasons uh, why you could see uh, anomalies within experiments. And once we have uh, identified and categorized, categorized these anomalies, so we basically use uh, uh, Teradata and Hive queries to determine uh, which uh, experiments are having what type of anomaly and on which channels, uh, by channel I mean like uh, desktop or mobile or, or a tablet, uh, which channel and what particular site and what particular business unit uh, that particular experimentation is having an anomaly. So we categorize all of this, we identify all of this uh, data and we store it uh, into a Hadoop cluster for uh, archival needs. So in case our InfluxDB uh, cluster or InfluxDB instance goes down, you could always uh, ingest this data back into a new uh, new machine. So, so we, we actually use uh, Grafana to uh, visualize uh, these anomalies. And starting the year, like I was like uh, going through my uh, this thing Twitter, and I happened to see the SpaceX SpaceX tweet, tweet by Torkel, and that actually led me to uh, introduce to uh, in Grafana, and then, then there has been no looking back uh, since uh, we started using this. So we were actually uh, considering using a proprietary tool, uh, MicroStrategy, that we are already using. Uh, instead of that, when I saw this Grafana, I felt uh, the, uh, uh, the kind of graphs that it shows, it's, it's really beautiful and uh, it's very, it was very easy to set up. So there was actually very little time to decide between MicroStrategy and a new set of open source technologies. So because the reasons it was very easy to set up, uh, that, that was actually like a very important decision uh, which led to the uh, uh, deciding uh, to use uh, Grafana. So a few other reasons why we chose Grafana uh, is a built-in query editor. So with, with MicroStrategy, like if I, if I want to publish a new kind of a report or a new kind of a metric if I want to start showing, I actually need to go to a developer and uh, he's going to take his own time. Then it's going to go through a, a QA and all of that and it, it takes a really lot, lot of time. But with Grafana and uh, you have the ability to change the dashboards instantly and just if you hit the save button, uh, it gets published uh, immediately. So these things actually led, uh, uh, these, these things are actually like very important in compared to uh, other tools what we have, and we decided to use uh, Grafana. So once I decided to use Grafana, I had to use uh, a, a backend, a time series database to store all of that data. So I, I was actually like uh, exploring multiple options and I, I decided to use InfluxDB. Again, for the same reason that uh, it was very easy to set up. It, it hardly took me like uh, 30, to, uh, 30 minutes to an hour to set it up. And this entire uh, POC I was able to complete in just a couple of days and then we was able to like uh, make the entire pipeline ready in maybe a month's time. So this is how our, uh, our tool uh, looks like. So this is the homepage. Uh, uh, every experiment creator or uh, we, could, uh, we could also be visiting this homepage and we could be seeing uh, uh, anomalies uh, within experiment. So the, so the metric here is actually just the experiment ID itself. So that, whether that particular experiment, those 2,000 experiments what I was talking about, so whether each particular type of experiment, either it is having anomaly or it is not having, and if it is having anomaly, what type of anomaly it is having, and on which channel and site and business unit it is coming from. So this actually gives an uh, overall uh, high-level view of the different types of anomalies, those gorges, uh, they have a certain threshold uh, uh, of that particular, so, so if, if, the, if the threshold is say beyond 20%, uh, I think that's what it's configured here, or 10%, so only then the, the person who is uh, doing the support, he actually needs to uh, go and uh, look into further uh, details. So if, 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 that, uh, if that user or, or the developer, when he's scrolling down, he could see uh, same information broken down by site, uh, by channel, or by business unit. So here actually in the, in, in the beginning, we had only site and channel. And then in the, in the back end, when the, we started introducing uh, business unit, all we had to do in the front end was just uh, duplicate the dashboards and start uh, using that new dimension. So, so that way, like the downtime and uh, the entire effort was hardly a few minutes, and it was up and running. So each of the gorges that you saw earlier, you could actually click them uh, and go into the detailed drill down pages. I, I think it is doing a gifting idea. So you, you could actually uh, click on each of them, and it's going to show a trend line uh, of uh, where the type of the anomaly that you're seeing, and from which particular business unit is coming, the same thing, like uh, the type of the experiment that it is in, so same information is now curated only for that specific type of anomaly. So next we have this uh, search dashboard. So this is the most commonly uh, used dashboard and this dashboard is used uh, across the company by different uh, uh, creators of experiments. So because experiments could be created by, uh, by, by, by any kind of a business unit and he or she can come to this page, uh, key in the experiment ID 
and instantly they come to know uh, if their experiment uh, is having any kind of anomaly or not. So th this is the most commonly used dashboard uh, with, within this tool. The scale is uh, pretty tiny when compared to the amount of data that ESDBs ca can handle. So at, at, at any time, we, like in, we have uh, around just 2,000 points which we ingest every day. And uh, the, inst uh, the setup is like pretty uh, simple and straightforward. Uh, we have like an InfluxDB machine and a Grafana machine. These are just single node machines. And uh, they have around 45 GB of memory. Both, are, both of them are hosted on a private cloud. And because we have all the our data uh, in the uh, Hadoop, and if these machines go down, we could just ingest it back. Currently, we have around uh, 10 months of historical data. So how, even if this, uh, the, the entire, uh, this use case is pretty small, so what, but what this has done is, uh, this has actually helped me to spread uh, the usage of Grafana within the company. So just uh, the, the, the place where I sit, I have like three to four teams around me, and once they actually started seeing this dashboard, they were like uh, very impressed with the kind of graphs that they see, and they wanted to use it in the, for their use cases. So one recent use case, uh, what I was able to onboard was uh, Elasticsearch cluster. So we have a pretty big uh, Elasticsearch cluster. And now they, they were using earlier proprietary tools. And again, the development time, the turnaround time for a new dashboard, it's, it's pretty slow. And when they uh, started seeing uh, Grafana and, uh, and the way they could slice and dice the data instantly, so they started using it. And they have a pretty big, uh, uh, when compared to the earlier use case at least, so they ingest around 10,000 points per second and they monitor uh, CPU, memory, and all those usual things what you monitor with the, uh, a particular Elasticsearch cluster. So we also have an anomaly detection team which uses various machine learning algorithms to uh, uh, track anomalies within the tracking data. So when a user is visiting the site, uh, we actually track a lot of data uh, about him so that we could personalize uh, his experience uh, for the site. So they, are, they have started again, uh, they have started using uh, Grafana plus uh, InfluxDB combination. Again, it just took me like just a couple of days uh, to onboard them and they started uh, using this. So, so the other use case what I was able to onboard was uh, uh, experimentation uh, reporting platform. So as I said, we have around 300 to 400 MR jobs that we submit every day and monitoring uh, performance of that is uh, pretty challenging if you, are, if you don't have an overall picture of it every day. So we actually, uh, what uh, uh, we have is Yarn, uh, which, which we use to submit uh, MapReduce jobs. So Yarn uh, exposes, uh, uh, the job counters to REST API. And we have a backend service which actually reads those uh, uh, job counters and ingests it into InfluxDB. And we visualize it, it using uh, uh, Grafana. So, 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 the, so the developer actually can go to the dashboard and uh, 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 analyze if there is a, any, kind of, uh, any kind of anomaly in the data, if the input data has suddenly spiked up, or if the cluster uh, has started performing uh, very slow, or, and uh, using that, he could actually uh, uh, analyze the uh, MR jobs uh, and then maybe make some informed decisions uh, uh, based on that. Actually, this brings the end of my talk. Thank you. So, uh, we actually use this. There are a lot of clients which have been uh, uh, written for InfluxDB. One of them is uh, there's a Scala client, uh, and it's an open source client, and uh, some uh, individual developer has written it. It's on GitHub. So we just use that client and uh, ingest it into uh, uh, InfluxDB for all the three use cases. Okay, well, uh, thank you again, Deepak. Please uh, give Deepak a hand.